YouTube, how's it going? The Goat House is back, and Melvin Ingram is back. He's been back for two weeks, and you can see the difference between the L.A. Chargers with and without him, and it really shouldn't have taken this long for people outside the league to realize his importance and how good this guy is. You know, I've been on the hype train, the Melvin Ingram hype train for a few years now, and, and now we got some proof. It, it took for him to get injured to actually you know, realize, for people to realize uh, this guy is the most important player, whether you think he's the best or not, but he is the most important player on this defense. We're going to go over some a uh, little bit of game film from the last two weeks and some a lot of crazy numbers that support the fact that this guy is extremely important and a damn good football player and has gone unnoticed for some years now, and that's what makes him in extremely underrated in my opinion. So we're going to break all that down. The main purpose is, is to show this guy's importance to the team and I think he would be that way for any team if he was if he was on any other team. Uh, before we get started, we have a subscriber goal of 40K by the end of the year. Please help us out by subscribing. More videos like this to come in the future. We also have daily videos. Every single week, we got recaps, power rankings, predictions, score predictions. Every single week of the NFL in the offseason, we, we don't stop. We keep going. We got draft coverage and free agency coverage. Daily NFL videos here. Tons of action. We got you covered. Click that like button. Check us out on Twitter. Really appreciate you guys for being here. And we don't even stop there. We got more content on the Patreon. Patreon.com slash thegoathouse. There is a link towards the top of the description. Playoff predictions updated every single week. Score predictions different from the ones on YouTube. Updated every single week on the Patreon. And mock drafts updated every single week on the Patreon. Updated order, the correct order every single week. All that is one package deal. You get a lot there and you help support us. We're going to take a look at a little bit of film here from the last two weeks uh, for, versus the Bears and the Packers when Melvin Ingram's been back and kind of see the difference um, you know, with him. Then we're going to go over some crazy, crazy numbers uh, that support how important he is that have to do with him and the, and the L.A. Chargers. So interesting stuff here. But uh, I've been, if you followed the Goat House, if you followed us for a while, you know I've been super high on Melvin Ingram from, from some time now. And people will kind of rip me a little bit for it, you know, whenever I put him high in rankings, you know. Uh, but, you know, if you don't get access to Chargers game, if you just you just don't have the chance to watch him, maybe you watch your own team, whatever you can watch. And you're, for the other players, you kind of got to look at stats. You know, that it tends to happen. And stats won't show how good this guy is. You know, he will not show. He makes everyone around him better. He plays so many different positions. He's the glue of this defense. That's the way I like to put it. Um, last year I did a top 100 at the end of the year. I actually had him 15th overall. People didn't like that, but that's where I put him because what he does, he's more than, I mean, if you look up Melvin Ingram, he'll be listed as an outside linebacker, an edge rusher. He's, he's I don't like that because he's way more than that. You see him right here against the Packers. He's lined up inside of Joey Bosa. He's a stand-up defensive lineman right now. He's inside the tackle. Uh, he's going in the B gap and he gets the Rodgers. Unlikely. Uh, that any pass rusher really gets the Rodgers in a single game, it feels like. You know, with that offense line and Aaron Rodgers being so smart, making adjustments and being able to move. Uh, and, I mean, it just shows that when a team sits down and watches film and then when Rodgers is making adjustments at the line or any quarterback, the focus is on Melvin Ingram. Is he is he going to stay with Jimmy Graham? Is he going to drop back in coverage? Is he going to pass rush? Where is he going to rush from? The focus is on him, which forces other guys to get pressure or sacks, pressure equals sacks over time, in my opinion. Uh, he just makes everyone better. And uh, I mean, a couple of these clips against the Bears, are, man, they're just ridiculous, and it shows. And he's not even getting the sacks. Um, you see the running back's going to shift over and help the guard block Melvin Ingram, who fired off the ball um, right when it was snapped. And then Joey Bosa is left one-on-one -on -one with the right tackle. He gets a sack. You don't want Joey Bosa to be one-on-one. -on -one. You don't want that. Nobody wants that, but their main focus is on this guy, 54, Melvin Ingram, which helps Joey Bosa get a sack. This one's even better. Uh, he's going to rush, but no, they won't let him rush because they got three. We're going to see it again. Count them, three guys blocking him. The running back's going to help out for a second while the center and guard help block 54. Running back's going to slip out, but what, what happened? Joey B Bosa was left one-on-one -on -one with the right tackle, I mean, that guy's a beast, too. You just don't want that. And the the Bears' game plan, you know, you think their game plan is to be one-on-one -on -one with Joey Bosa all day and, and 
have three guys block Melvin Ingram? No, that's not the game plan. When they game plan, they're focusing on Melvin Ingram to see where he goes because that kind of can give you an idea what's going to happen. But it's it's disguised so well because of Melvin Ingram. You don't know what he's going to do. He'll switch from one side of the ball to the other just like that before the ball is snapped, and, and it changes everything. It makes, it makes linemen and running backs make decisions that they have to come up in full speed in their head in milliseconds and it usually is the wrong decision so you see how good he is but the main thing he makes everybody else better and you see we're going to see some insane numbers here the chargers with melvin ingram this season four and two it's a good record solid record and then without him they're zero and three they don't have a single win with melvin ingram don't have a single win in the last two games when he's been back two and oh so everybody knows that the numbers get crazier. They, they, they actually get crazier. Uh, defense, points per game, points allowed per game for their defense with 16.8. They allow 16.8 points per game this year with Melvin Ingram in the game, in, in, on the field, healthy. Without him, 22.3. Now, most of you, you know, that follow football strongly, like I do, you know, you know there's a big difference there, but some people may look at the numbers, 16.8, 22.3. Is it really that much of a difference? It is a huge difference. And, and to kind of prove that, uh, if, if they allowed 16.8 points per game, with that, where do they rank in defense? They would be fourth. Fourth best defense in terms of points allowed per game with 16.8. Fourth. If they allow 22.3 points per game, 18th. So fourth, 18th best defense, yeah, That it's a huge difference. Huge difference. But to make it even more ridiculous, the games without him, just, just I'm going to list off the three teams and you just think about their offense, those teams' offense. Denver Broncos, Tennessee Titans, Pittsburgh Steelers. They've given up 22.3 points per game, which really isn't terrible. It's middle of the league. But to those three teams, and then with 16.8, and you saw the difference, 4th to 18th, it's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And we know why. It's because he makes everyone around him better, but he also makes it harder for the other offenses. The focus is on him, which takes focus on other play, off other players like Joey Bosa, like Jerry Tillery, whoever it may be. Uh, and more numbers here. Uh, snaps. Take a look at the snap counts. When Melvin Ingram gets 90%, more than 90% of the snaps, more than 90%, they're 3-1. The, re- the record of the Chargers is 3-1. and one. When he gets under 90%, they're 0-1. Oh now, you, you may think there's some games missing there, but I did not include the games he did not play, and I did not include the Dolphins game, which he got hurt at one point in the game. So I took away the games that didn't allow him to get a chance to get to the 90%. So the games where he had a, a chance to get to the 90% snap count, when he got over, they're 3-1. and one. When he got under, they're 0-1. And the, the fact that 90%, 90% is a lot for a pass rusher, but kind of going back to my point that he is more than that. So some more numbers. When he get, actually gets 95% snaps or more, the Chargers are 2-0. and oh. And he actually have, he got 99% of the snaps in that Packers game. 99. And to get you an idea how crazy that is, uh, I mean, he averages 92% this year. And Bosa, who is a damn good pass rusher, averages 85. And that's about where other really good pass rushers will average. 85 to 88 range. You know, somewhere in there. You know, maybe even like 84 to 88 range, I would call it. Percent, percentage of snaps, those pass rushers are on the field. Meanwhile, this guy, Melvin Ingram, played 99% of snaps against the Green Bay Packers. And we're talking about probably the Chargers' overall best performance of the year. You know, overall, and then on top of that, the Packers were the best team they played. Um, and they were, they, were, they were rolling, too. So 99% of snaps in that game, it's ridiculous. There's no other pass rusher. That, that plays even anywhere near that. We see the 95%. He's played twice over that, one game being the Packers. They were 2-0 um, when he gets over 95%. But why is that? It's because 
he's that important to the team and because he's he's not a pass rusher. He's a pass rusher. He's a he's a stand up line outside linebacker, inside linebacker. He's a stand up defense alignment. He he'll put his hand in the dirt, be a defense lineman. We saw that a lot in the Ravens game last year. You know, if you if you look at the Ravens playoff game last year, he's really not in the stat sheet at all. He's not in the box score at all, like most games. And people he'll go unnoticed because of that. But he was absolutely dominant in the interior in that game. Lamar Jackson Lamar Jackson's struggles were because of Melvin Ingram mainly, and I promise you that. And I was talking about that at the time last year. But, yeah, the 99%, it's absolutely insane. It's insane that a guy is able to do that, you know, physically. Um, but, and again, it shows how bad they need him because he he's more than just that edge rusher. They need him on all those snaps. And there is very, very, very little amount of guys like that, very little – um, there really might only be two. It really right now it might only be Melvin Ingram and a new one. Um, you know this year is Darius Smith from the Packers. So, uh, is doing very similar things, and that's why I absolutely love his game too. Um, so it's it's absolutely wild what this guy what this guy does, and it's finally starting to get noticed now. And then we kind of have the proof now. Uh, and then looking at Joey Bosa with Melvin Ingram with with him five and a half sacks without. Three sacks, not a not a ginormous difference really, but I mean there's a difference there. Uh, but another thing is like we talk about how they they line up on the same side. And here's a interesting next gen stat here, uh, very cool. Joey Bosa, and Melvin Ingram when aligned on the same side of the defense, which we saw some clips of, which helped Joey Bosa get a sack. Um, when they're on the same side, there's been only 19 defensive plays. Uh, some of that has is due to you know only being 19 because. Melvin Ingram was out, and I don't think they get carried away with that early. You know, I've seen it last year, too. I've seen it in the past. It's something they don't want teams to have a whole bunch of film on, and that's it's a very good thing for the Chargers going forward as long as both these guys are healthy. Uh, and Joey Bosa was kind of hurt uh, early last year, too, so that's a big reason for uh, for those types of numbers, too, and why they kind of busted out late. Uh, but 19, and out of uh, that 19, those 19 defensive plays, where they're on the same side, 11 QB pressures, in five sacks, five sacks, 19 plays, five sacks. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. You look at when they're on opposite sides, 108 compared to 19. 108 defensive plays with four sacks, 19 plays with five sacks. And you see the pressure rate, you see the percentage difference, 14 to 57. Ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, and, and it's and it's mainly Joey Bosa getting those sacks. You think Joey Bosa's, you know, magically gets. Um, you know, traits all of us. I mean, the guy's great. I'm not trying to doubt him, you know, knock him any, at, at all, and he's going to be better. But you think he magically develops some kind of magic trait and strength when a guy lines up in the side? No, it, it's it's more than that. It, it, his job becomes a lot easier. And again, they're going to do more of this as season goes on. They don't want teams. Well, you got Melvin Ingram healthy now. You got Joey Bosa healthy. Wasn't healthy at some a portion of last year. And as the season goes on, you know, now it's crucial time because they have to win. You know, you want to save stuff like this for the playoffs. All kinds of teams and game planners, coaches want to do that, but you have to get in the playoffs first. So they're gonna we're gonna start seeing more of this, and they're gonna they're gonna start creating some problems like they used to, like they did last year. And you can throw Derwin James back in this mix, hopefully at some point. And that guy, you know, I mean, he's more than just a safety too, and that's why they drafted him. That's what that's that's why Gus Bradley wanted that guy. Guys that have the similar you know, abilities as Melvin Ingram, even though they're different, totally different body types, totally different positions. Because Derwin James more of the safety. You see him go in the box. He can af- actually get after the quarterback. Uh, and you see Desmond King, they're starting to use in blitzes. Uh, and they had to use him more when Melvin Ingram was out. If you notice that, Desmond King was being used more in those blitzes when he was out. And they, they still they did it quite a bit last game too. So that's really cool to see. They're very unique. They got, they're very good with dis- disguises, and it starts with Melvin Ingram. Uh, I mean, one of the best pass rushers in the league, Joey Bosa, is better, is 100% better with Melvin Ingram uh, causing havoc, you know, next to him, um, you know, moving around in the box as a stand-up guy. No matter where it is, he makes guys better. And, and Joey Bosa gets all the credit. I mean, he gets a lot of the credit. I mean, he deserves a lot of credit. The guy's a freak. But, you know, it, it just makes a guy like Melvin Ingram so underrated, though. 
And, and that's something I noticed for years, and we're finally starting to see. We're, we're finally starting to get some credit for this guy. Uh, and I just love these types of players. Unique player. I mean, that's the best way to put it. Um, you know, you just, just not very many of them. You know, not very many of them. And defense is just so hard to play because um, you just don't have so much. You don't have enough time to – um, you know, figure out what the offense is doing. It's basically it's basically a guessing game most of the time, and, and then for him to be such a unique unique player on the defense side of the ball is you know I appreciate that. You know, I, that, that's that's what you know players like that really make me love the game more. Uh, so that's why this guy has been always one of my favorite players in the league. And I'm not a Chargers fan, um, but he he's just what he does in the field and what what he does for his teammates is just. And the importance for his team, and we we start to see it now. It's absolutely insane. Uh, but this was an interesting video. I thought of. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully, I can do some more of these in the future. We also have plenty, plenty more content on the channel already, and plenty more to come. We got you covered every single week with every single game. Like I said, full off season coverage as well. We never stop here at the Goat House. So please subscribe. Go ahead and click that like button. That's gonna do it for this one. Thanks everyone for watching. Goodbye. My dogs only write these credit cards, dude. You're gonna write it up. I'm sick of this thing. <laughs>